Hey guys, Nova Joe here. I come to you today with an unboxing video. I am a little late in purchasing this item, but I thought you guys would uh, enjoy seeing it. Those of you who may not have seen it, and I highly doubt there's anybody out there in the gaming world who has not seen this yet, but in case you've never looked up a video on it and checked it out to see what it was or what it's like, here you go. So let's get to it. I ordered this about a month ago from GameStop. They were running a deal where you get $40 off this item. And so I figured now's the perfect time to get it. There's uh, no better time than when they're giving you $40 off on it. And I've done some research, looked online, and um, I feel like I got probably the best price I can get for it new outside of buying it used. So let's just check it out. First off, this is a... Now it looks like it's been opened since it's been shipped and then retaped. So I'm guessing the post office must have wanted to know what it was. So now it's going to get open again for the third time. Kind of like Christmas morning. <laughs> All right, guys, there it is. I finally broke down and bought a Retron 5. I really wanted the black version, uh, but GameStop just didn't have the black version. And they definitely, I definitely could not pass up the price I got this for. So here it is in all its glory. So let's open it up, see what comes inside it. Probably everything that's pictured on the box. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, kind of getting back into retro gaming. I was born in 79, so I grew up during the heyday of it. And, uh, my days consisted of playing the Sega Master System, which that was the very first console I ever had. and It wasn't until 91 that I got an NES, so for several years all I had was a Master System. So I've got a love for classic games. All right, a little egg carton. Pull it all in with the instructions, and the instructions come with stickers. I don't know where I would put these, but uh, it's it's cool. Retron 5 for Game Boy Advance, Super NES, NES, Genesis, and Famicom. Hyperkin. Play well, live well. Alright. Yeah, I don't know where I would put these. I don't really have any gaming stuff that's big enough I could stick it on. I don't really have any plans on sticking it on the windows of my car. So, <laughs> Alright. Let's get to the more boring stuff first. You got your power adapter, which... QC passed. Okay. Looks pretty generic. Pretty generic looking power adapter. But hey, you know, nobody's going to be staring at the power adapter when it's behind your dresser or behind your entertainment center. It's just going to be plugged in. So who cares as long as it works. Oh, then you got your region adapters. The different regions of the country. So yeah, so I'm in the United States. So the, there's my plug and it works just fine. So okay. Got a mini USB cable here to power the controller. And gold plated HDMI cable. That's really nice when they give you HDMI cables with stuff. Remember when you got the PlayStation 3 and it just came with composite cables? A high definition system with just composite cables. It made no sense whatsoever. Okay. Well, it's flashing blue, so it tells me it's already got some charge on it. Ooh. I don't know 
know about that D-pad. I've heard other people make comments about the about the D-pad on this. And, you know, I don't want to judge until I've actually got it in my hands. Well, now I've got it in my hands, and I'm not digging the way it feels. Uh, I've heard people call this a micro-switch type of uh, D-pad. I mean, it's real clicky, so that's going to get a little annoying when you're playing and you're trying to move around. But all in all, it's not a bad feeling controller. It's It doesn't... Doesn't I mean it holds really well? I mean, my gosh, we grew up with the NES guys. That thing was a rectangle, and I can remember getting gamer's thumb from the buttons on it. But you didn't care. I still don't care. I think I could. I think I could get used to this. Uh, just the the major thing is, and here's what I found with these uh, third party controllers. The buttons usually work fine, except for the D pad. The D pad usually is what's sloppy on them. I've got some, uh, I can't think of the brand, Hoji or Noji, something like that. I, I can't remember, Nagi. I can't remember what the brand is, but I bought these off-brand NES controllers, and other than A and B and start and select working, the D-pads were terrible. You'd go to push right, and it would uh, want to push down. And so, I mean, it was like the, there was too much of a gap between the, each section of the cross pad. Um, I don't know how I'm going to like this. I guess time will tell. So there's that. Alright. Now for the main event. The console itself. And there's a stray hair in the box. I guess that was added bonus. <laughs> Alright, there it is guys. The Retron 5 console. You've got your Genesis slot there, which I'm assuming is also for Mega Drive, because I don't, I never had a Mega Drive, so, well, the cartridges are the same, what am, I, what am I saying, the cartridges are the same for Genesis and Mega Drive, so they'd fit there. Got your Super NES port here, which obviously is wide enough here that, I guess that'd be where your Super Famicom games go to in the same same port. I guess it have to. There's not enough ports on here for all of them individually. So yeah, that's where your Super NES and your Super Famicom go. There's where your NES carts go, and there's where your Famicom go. And I can understand there being a difference there because Famicom carts were a lot smaller than than NES carts. So there's that. Then we have your Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, and Game Boy Color slot right there. Just like I've seen in other videos, it comes with these little rubber pads that cover up your Super NES, your NES, and your Genesis ports. Now, I have read online that if you plug in any controller, it will work with any console that's featured on this. So you've got your, say you plug in a Super NES uh, controller. I have read that it will work for your Genesis, your uh, uh, Mega Drive, your NES, all those games. Basically, it's just any controller you plug in will work. So that's really cool. That's a really cool feature. I mean, because right now, the only thing I have that's official, because like a lot of gamers, I got rid of my stuff as I moved on to different consoles. I've had to go back and rebuy some stuff. All I have is a Genesis controller. So I'm hoping that I will be able to play my NES and, uh, well, definitely my Genesis, but I'm hoping I'll be able to play my NES with, uh, with the controller for the Sega Genesis. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied here, guys. I'm just taking it all in. Also, uh, this will play Master System games if you have the Power Base Converter. But, I don't know if you've looked on eBay lately. Power Base Converters are expensive. Some people still have them brand new. They're selling them for about $150. Other people are selling used ones for $70 and $80. Bucks. I had a Power Base Converter. And I gave it away to a kid that... I don't even know if he cared about it or not, but I just gave it away. It was a ex-girlfriend's brother. And, you know, getting in good with the girlfriend. You treat her brother real good. So I gave him 
all my Sega Master System stuff, as well as my power base converter, because I wasn't going to need it anymore, at least in my thoughts. All right, guys, anyway, uh, that is, that's everything regarding the Retron 5. I'm going to try it out tonight. Oh, also, uh, of importance, it's got the SD card slot here so you can update the firmware, uh, HDMI port, it's got where the mini USB goes, and it got the power cord. It does not support uh, composite, component, S-video, doesn't support any of those. I think there's an adapter out there that will let you go from HDMI down to those other lower grade cables. But for this, it's HDMI and HDMI only. And from what I have read, this does upgrade your games to 720p. So uh, and, and offers many, many, many different uh, filters. Since this is an emulation machine, uh, basically it just takes the, the ROM that's on the cart, rips it straight off of there, puts it in here, allows you to... Um, allows you to play the game through emulation and then apply different filters, graphical filters that make the games look better. Uh, you can use cheats. There's a, you can put cheats on an SD card and it will allow you to uh, play games with cheats in here. You can, and this is a cool feature. I, I like this feature because some games back in the heyday really could have benefited from this and that's a save feature. Now granted, it's a save state feature, and for those of you who, know, who don't know what a save state is, it basically allows you to freeze the game, save it in that one location, and then load that one location back up numerous times. It offers 10 save state files for every game you put in. So, it can make getting through tougher games, it, it's, it can be used for cheating, basically, you get up to a boss, you use the wrong strategy and you die, well just use your save state and you can reload it back at the at the spot right before that boss when the game actually intended you to, if you lost to the boss, to redo the whole stage. So, or if you ran out of lives, redo the whole stage. Well in this situation, you can just reload the save state infinitely. However, for other games, especially games that you're, you're just wanting to experience, your games that literally can take a long time or for example you need to go in my situation my wife hollers and says I need <laughs> I need you to do something or it's dinner time you can just save your game where you're at instead of like the old days you have to put it on pause and leave it on pause until you got done with whatever you're doing on here you can just save the state turn it off come back to it later whenever you want to so that that is a good feature well, guys, that's not the only thing I wanted to show you. Since I purchased this, I had to pick up a few other things to go along with it. You know, kind of make it useful. So let's push this out of the way. Let's start off with... Remember I mentioned the, the power base converter? I just wasn't going to pay those prices. I was not going to pay $70 or $80 for a used one that I had no guarantee was going to work. So, there's an alternative through Stone Age Gamer called the Power Base Mini. It basically allows you to play your, it doesn't basically, it does, it allows you to play your Sega Master System games on your Sega Genesis. The only problem is, for those of you who don't know, Sega Genesis not only played um, cartridges, but it also played cards, kind of like a TurboGrafx-16 card, like a Hue card. It could, it could play cards. Now the power base converter, the official one from Sega, plays both the cards and the cartridges. This one only does the cartridges. So it was a lot cheaper, a whole lot cheaper than buying an official power base converter. So as you can see, it's still wrapped in the plastic because I haven't had a chance to use it. I do have another Sega Genesis, but I, I wasn't going to break it out just to try this out. I was going to try it out with the Retron 5. And from what I've seen videos on YouTube, the, the PowerBase uh, Mini does work with the Revtron 5. So there's that. Okay. Back in college, I played the very first RPG that I'd ever played. And I beat it. And I loved it. And back in college, I became a pretty good fan of uh, Dragon Ball Z. So, I was like many. I used emulators. I downloaded... Dragon Ball Z, Legend of the Super Saiyan. 
for the Super Famicom? Well, back when I played it, there wasn't a full 100% translation for the language. And so I played through like 90% of the game, and then it was back in Japanese again, and I had to finish it up in Japanese. And I loved the game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was my very first RPG I ever played and beat, so I had to buy it again. So here it is, and this is another cool feature of the Retron 5. You can download language patches for the games, put them on an SD card, load them into the system, and it will patch the language with your native language into the game. So that when you play this game, you can play it in English. And there are sites out there that have the translation patches. Just uh, go on there and look for yours. Next up, King of the Monsters. I always liked King of the Monsters. I never played it on the Neo Geo back in the day. I have since played, I think, the second one on the Neo No, No, I've played the first one on the Neo Geo. And I can remember actually getting to play this one back in college as well and really loving it. I just, I just loved the game. So <laughs> it's a mixture of wrestling, fighting, and giant monsters just going at it. So uh, I'll probably do a retro review of this in the near future. Last up, now this has taken me back. Back in the 90s, I got an old beater PC. It was a piece of junk, but it, it was five and a quarter floppy. It was definitely not up to par with the current computers of the time. Well, my loving uncle, uh, God rest his soul, he knew I got that computer, and he wanted me to have a game for that computer. So he went out and he bought me this, uh, I think it was like an Apache helicopter game. And I remember opening it up, and it really meant a lot to me that he had bought that for me. Uh, he really wanted me to have something fun to play on that. And, and I didn't have the heart to tell him that the computer wouldn't run the game. So... Because he wanted me to have a helicopter game, I took the game back and exchanged it, or I got my credit back and used that credit to buy Desert Strike. One of the most enjoyable air combat games I've ever played. It's not a flight simulator. It's an isometric top-down view game uh, where you're a helicopter going on these different missions. It's kind of like an open world game blowing up uh, things taking on a, a, a Middle Eastern madman, <laughs> which was something that was going on at that time. Anyway, guys, this was a very nostalgic purchase for me, and, and it, it really takes me back to a, a great time when uh, my uncle bought me a helicopter game that he wanted me to have. And he was always the uncle, the only uncle I've ever had who ever bought me games. And uh, he passed away a few years ago, but... Every time I see this game, I think about him. And so, here it is. Desert Strike on the Sega Genesis. And I remember completing this game. Funny story behind completing this game. I, it's funny. The memories you attach to things. When I beat this game, I remember having such a feeling of accomplishment. I remember walking out in the living room. My parents were watching a movie. And I just sat down in the chair with a big smile on my face and looked over at the TV and they were watching Guarding Tess. If y'all remember that movie, Guarding Tess, with Shirley MacLaine, and I think Nicolas Cage was in it. And I remember just sitting there and, and thinking about beating this game, and, and I started watching Guarding Tess with them and finished up the movie. So it's just a memory I've attached to it. Anyway, that's Desert Strike. Now, these are two other games that I never played back in the day but really wanted to. And they fall into the lines of the Strike series. Jungle Strike, Urban Strike. I love Desert Strike so much. Um, I got it when I was probably about 13 or 14 years old. I didn't have any money. I couldn't go out and buy games. And these were the next in line, Jungle Strike and Urban Strike. And Back then they were 50 bucks a piece, and I was not going to be getting them unless I got them for Christmas or something. And I didn't get them for Christmas. So... I had to buy them, I had to pick them up. They're the same type gameplay, uh, top-down, isometric view, uh, just 
going around blowing stuff up, open, kind of like an open world, go do what you want, uh, solve the missions in the order that you want to solve them in. Uh, if they're anything like Desert Strike, they're going to be great. So, anyway, those are some more purchases I picked up. Other than that, guys, I'm done. I just wanted to uh, show you the Retron 5, show you my game purchases, um, let you see what the Retron 5 comes with, and tell you some of the specifications, things that it can do. So, anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, take care, God bless, and keep on gaming.